good morning. As Ashley said, this is going to be about customizing catalog symbols and footprints. Just wanted to add one little side note. She mentioned the survey at the end, and in that survey, there's comments where you can make suggestions or requests of things you'd like to see in the future. This particular webinar, particular webinar is the result of comments from previous webcasts. So we do read those. Uh, I've had several people over the last two or three electrical ones I've done request uh, stuff about customizing your catalogs and your footprints and things. So that's the reason we're doing this one today is because it's been a uh, requested several times. So when I'm doing customization, uh, I usually go through, I have this checklist that I go through. I call it my customization checklist. Let me see if I can, there it goes. And uh, these are the five areas I go through my brain to process just to say, do I need to do these? So. First thing I always look at is do I need catalog information? Do I need to create any schematic symbols? Do I need any footprints? Footprint lookup, and do I want to customize my icon menu? So those are the five areas I work through to see if I need to do those. Not all customization requires all five steps. For instance, uh, the fuse that comes out of the box for schematic symbols, it does not have descriptions in it. So when I went to customize it, I just needed to add some uh, descriptions to the schematic symbol itself. So there's no need for me to create a footprint or add catalog information. I was just doing the symbol. Sometimes the symbols are what I need. I just need to add a new manufacturer catalog information, or I don't like the footprint I have, so I need to update the footprint. If I update a footprint, maybe a footprint lookup. So there's these are just what I go through to process uh, to basically say, have I covered all my areas? So we're going to start because what we're going to do is go through all five with our symbol today because we're going to add something that's completely not in the catalog. Of course, it'll be bogus manufacturer and everything because I'm not supposed to use real manufacturers. But uh, we're going to start with the catalog information and what I need to do to add custom catalog information. So let me switch over here to AutoCAD Electrical. And you should be seeing now my AutoCAD electrical on my screen. So this is a schematic diagram that's already been in process. I'm going to go over here to model space because I do use model space and paper space. I'm going to start with this variable resistor because everything I'm going to do is I'm going to be adding a potentiometer to the system. So I'm going to use this variable resistor as the schematic symbol where I'm going to add first the catalog information. Now I picked the variable resistor for pretty specific reason. If I go to edit this component out of the box, when I hit look up on that variable resistor, it's going to tell me that it can't find the family code for variable resistor in the default catalog, because that's all I have running right now is the default catalog out of the box. So that family code is not even in the catalog. So I need to add that uh, family code to the catalog first of all, before I can even add the information. So it gives me an opportunity to show you how to add that type of information to your catalog. Now, when I hit OK, it gives me an opportunity to do that. I could do it by component or family. I personally don't like to do it by component because it gives the entire WD block name and I want to do it by family. So I could just easily right here hit family and it would add it. The only thing is when I add it from here, all it does is add the family code. And I want the description to be in there, and I'll show you why I want the description in there in a couple of minutes. But I want the description in there also. So I never add mine using this dialog box. I'm going to cancel out of it, cancel again. And over here on the project tab, under other tools, the fourth one from the right looks like a little Excel file. That's adding tables to the catalog database. So I'm going to go ahead and select that command select my default catalog out of the box and as you can see there's no VR in here out of the box so I'm going to add VR and variable resistor as my description and if I would have added it with the other one all it would have gotten was the table name it would have created everything correctly but no table description and I like the table description in there so I'm going to hit OK that's pretty much all there is to it. I've added it completely to the uh, product 
or the default catalog. So I'm going to go back to edit component. When I look, hit look up this time, they'll get the message and it went straight to the variable resistor I just created. And you can see the description there, which they have on everything. So I like mine to be just like theirs. So that's why I wanted to add it the other way. So that's how you can add your own family codes if you need to and things like that to your catalog is by using that command under the other tools of the project tab. <clears throat> Next thing I want to point out here is Notice it's using query two and query three here. That's just the default names of the tables, and I cannot change that. Uh, that's just the way it's going to name them, but I can change that in Microsoft Access. So if I wanted it to say something else, I could do that in Microsoft Access. I did a webinar a couple of years ago about using Access to access the database of uh, AutoCAD Electrical, which you can find on the uh, webcast on demand on Hagerman.com. And I actually did that in that particular webinar. But the second thing here is right now I only have a primary catalog database and I do not like to put my custom information into my default information. Now if I was using SQL database, I wouldn't have to worry about it because it's one database. But using an access database, I want to add a secondary catalog so that I can put all my custom stuff in there, makes migration a lot easier in the future. So I'm going to cancel back out again one more time and come over here to my project properties. And right here where it says other file, I'm going to select that and I'm going to use an optional secondary database. So I'm going to browse over here to my network drive, which is on my S drive. And under catalogs, I have a catalog I'm going to use here to add. Uh, everything to. So I'll select that catalog, hit OK, hit OK. And now when I go to this lookup, I can change from the primary to the secondary. Now in that uh, secondary catalog, I had already cr created the variable resistor table, the same way I did the other one in the default, but I'd already done that in my secondary catalog, so it didn't have it. But I needed in both catalogs for the lookup to work correctly in both catalogs without giving me any error messages. So I needed it in both the default as well, well as my secondary. I just didn't see a reason to recreate it and take up the time. And you can notice here I had changed in my, whoops, changed in my secondary catalog, query two and query three to be uh, rate type and rating. So currently in that particular catalog, <clears throat> I have nothing in there. And this is where I want to add my catalog information. And I do that by selecting the pencil right here. And it takes me to this screen here where they all turned yellow to let me know I am editing the actual catalog at this point. Now the important thing on the catalog information is the first five columns must be full, filled out. You cannot skip it, even if it's information that's repetitive, all five catalogs have to be, uh, of those columns have to be filled out for your catalog to, uh, to look up to actually find your information in the catalog. So I'm going to start with my catalog number, which is going to be an OL11-1000. My manufacturer is a made up manufacturer, but it's going to be Nigel. The manufacturer is important because when I do the footprint lookup later, it works off manufacturer. So I have to make sure my manufacturer names match. So I can't call it Nigel here and then the footprint lookup call it Nigel Incorporated because if I do that, they'll never link it up. So I have to use the same terminology both here as well as my footprint lookup. So that's going to be important for that. This is going to be a tube amp potentiometer which means basically this is a volume knob for a guitar amp. Although we're going to use it on a board, I just what I selected to do this with. It's a linear uh, taper is the type and the rating is 1000 ohms. Thus the OL11-1000 and the model number being the rating. Now miscellaneous and miscellaneous two, one and two here, those are optional. You can fill those out for additional information in your description for your bill of materials. 
Uh, I'm not going to bother. I usually keep mine pretty simple. Assembly code list and quantity, we're not going to cover that, but that's if you're using assembly codes. Again, I did a webinar a couple of years ago on uh, how to do assemblies in AutoCAD Electrical, and in that particular webinar, we addressed those three columns or those three fields. User one, two, three, again, are optional. You can put them in there. A lot of people use them for like uh, inventory numbers or and things like that for parts. Uh, they could, whatever you want to use them for, they could be done with. The text value is the next one that's important to me in this particular case, because you notice I have a rating down here in my variable resistor. That means that the symbol itself has a rating one attribute, which we will deal with when we do the schematic symbol later. And this is how I tell it what to put in that rating symbol attribute right there. So their ratings are always called rating one is the default name for the first one. You can have multiple, like if you look at a motor, there'll be a rating one, two, three, and four. But in this case, it's just the one rating one attribute and it's going to equal, and I'm going to type in 1K for 1,000 ohms, and instead of putting the word ohms, I want to put the ohm symbol, and so to do that, I can use Unicode symbols, and Unicode symbols would be f typed in by, enter, entered in by saying slash U plus, and then the, in a, the Unicode symbol number, which in this case for an ohm is 2126 and that will give you the own symbol. So you can actually use symbols and stuff. If you need to know Unicode symbols, you can Google Unicode ASCII symbols and find out all those numbers that you want to. The next one is web link. Now web link, you know, when you go to catalog check and you have the web view button, that's what web link is for. That tells it where to go on when you hit that web view button. So normally you want to put something in there uh, like a link to the <coughs> particular uh, device page on the on the manufacturer's website so you can get the cut sheet for your OEL manuals or something. Uh, but I'm going to just put a link in there to Hagerman's blog because I need to point some stuff out to you later. So that's all I'm going to put in there for us. But it's just any kind of web link. It needs to be the full thing, HTTP S or HTTP colon forward slash forward slash. Everything is the exact link you would do to get to that particular page. Now, WD block name, and I may be going a little bit fast here, but we're trying to cover a lot of material in a short amount of time. As Ashley said, you'll get a link to the webcast uh, recording uh, emailed to you, and you can rewatch this and pause as necessary to get uh, to have it at a little slower pace for you to actually do this. But the WD block name is important because that's what's used in the filter right here and that will help it find stuff and they're all usually defined in the symbol and that's what activates the filter. So for this particular one it's needing a filter of VR1TZ so that's what I need for a WD block name. However, footprints work off the family code so I need both. So what I'm going to put in here is VR for the family code comma VR1TZ, and that way this would work for the filter here as well as the footprints. So that's what the WD block name is for. Symbol 2D, we will come back to that after in a few minutes and show you that. That's for uh, mapping your uh, component, the what symbol you're using when you pick this one from the catalog. Symbol 3D is for inventor, so that's going to be on the inventor side. The last four here are coil pins, pin list, peer coil pins, and peer pin list. The only one I need for this device is the coil pins, so I'm going to put in there, it's got three pins, which is a plus, a minus, and a W separated by commas is all I need to do to get pin one, pin two, pin three. You can get a lot fancier with these pins, uh, for the, the coil pins, pin list, pure coil pins. Those all have specific tasks that you can do with them. I did an article in the blog that shows how those four work and how you can use them. And I'm going to, when, after we get this created, we'll go to the web view and I'll show you that article so you can get that information. So basically uh, by different webinars and uh, articles that have been written, everything about every column here has been defined in some, at some point at, at this time. 
but that's the last part of this. Now I can't just add a second piece in here because I need five of these that are just going to be different ratings. So to get these in, the first one in there, I'm going to hit the check mark up here for accept changes. That accepts it. Now I'm just going to immediately go right back to the edit button. And I'm going to highlight this first one by clicking on that gray box and do a control C, then come down to the asterisk, control V. I'm just going to put four more in here. So there's three and here's the fourth one. And now I've got four versions of the exact same thing in here. And I just need to change my model numbers. So that'll be a 2000. This one will be a 2500. This one I'm going to make a 5000. And this one I'll make a 7500. And those correspond to the ratings. So this will be a 2000. 2500, 5000, and 7500. And likewise, that needs to be correct over here in my text value that goes in the rating down here. So I just have to make three changes on each one to get these five different versions of this particular potentiometer into my catalog. So I've now got five versions in here. When I hit the check mark, all five show up here based on the filter. I'm just gonna pick one, tell it okay. It filled out my manufacturer catalog. There you can see the rating 2.5K with the ohm symbol and the plus minus W for my pin. So everything pulled over from there. And if I go to the catalog check, you'll see there's the information going into the bill of materials. And the web view will open up the Hagerman blog here. Let me close that one and take me right to the AutoCAD electrical blog and the pin list one I was talking about. You can see I've got here AutoCAD electrical the pin is mightier than coil part two. And if you hit next year, you'll see part one. So part one covers basically the first two columns that are were in there, which were the uh, coil pins and the Peer, I think the peer list was the two that were on it. And if you went to the article on part two, it covers the second two columns. So one is covering uh, the first one, coil pins and pin list. The second one, peer coil pins and peer pin list. So that's how those work. And you, at, you can get to those four that way. And that's why I wanted the link in there is to be able to show you. It's just under the blogs of Hagerman for electrical. Go ahead and hit close. I'm going to hit OK, map the symbol to the catalog number. I'm going to go ahead and do that. And that is so I can go back in here to that same piece. Just to show you, I'm going to get rid of the 2500 here in the search. So I see all five. And what that map to the catalog number what did was it came over here in the symbol 2D. I told you we'd come back here. And it put that symbol into that particular column. And I can save myself from having to do that on the other four by just copy and pasting that same one in each one. And now, no matter what I change it to, it won't ask me to map it again because it's been mapped. So we'll go ahead and leave that one 2,500 for now. But just for showing sake, we'll make this one a 5,000. And I know in real life they would all be the same, but in this particular case, but We'll make this one a 1000 just to give you three different versions, all done from the same catalogs entry. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry, I wanted to hit my mute first, but I didn't get to it. So basically, that gets us with the catalog information completely done all the way through. And we're ready for step two, which is schematic symbols. Now there are different types of schematic symbols. You have your one line diagrams, you have your ladder diagrams, your point to point, hydraulic, pneumatic, all different types of schematic symbols. They are all created the exact same way with one minor difference, which we're gonna go through. But before we go to that, let's talk about um, templates for your, for your symbols. So we'll come back over here to AutoCAD Electrical, let me open up a different drawing. We'll save that one. 
I'm going to do a point to point symbol because I already had the variable resistor over there. I just need a point to point version because there's not one out of the box. So basically, if I was to create a symbol and I'm going to go over here to the schematic tab and symbol builder right up here. Really doesn't matter if I opened up the symbol builder on the schematic tab or panel tab. They're identical, same command. I'm just on that and went to the schematic tab. The first thing I want to point out here, though, are the templates over here, which are the attribute templates. Now, these are just the paths that are set up in the project properties of where the templates are. And you can see I've got the choice of horizontal, parent, child, footprints, nameplates, any type of a template that's there. And I've got types of templates within those. So I have my fuse template and my circuit breaker template and my push button and so on. And you'll see there's no VR. There's no variable resistor template here out of the box. So I want a template here because I, I could use the generic template. That would work perfectly fine. It's missing a couple of attributes that I want though in every time I do a variable resistor. So that's why I want to customize, have a custom template. So let's start with talking about where those templates are and how they are named. So symbol builder templates have a specific file naming convention. Basically, the first two characters are, a, are AT for attribute template, followed by an underscore. The next character can be an H, V, or P, horizontal, vertical, or panel. You can actually use the entire word. I could type in the whole word or horizontal and that would work, but all that's necessary is H, V, or P. You don't have to type in the whole words. The next character which I'm represented with the question mark is PCT, F, or N, which is parent, child, terminal, footprint, or nameplate. Again, you could use the whole word, but all you need is the first character to make it work. That one's followed by an underscore, which is the family code next. So VR for variable resistor, PB for push button, CB for um, circuit breaker. And then, of course, it's a drawing file. So that's the naming convention the templates have to follow. Those are kept in a location of your li where your libraries are. So for instance, if I open up my um, file explorer here, I've created myself a shortcut here where I can just click on it. And this is where my library files are. Now, the library files, I'll show you a minute in the project properties of where those are set because just like everything else, I keep my templates separate. I like everything separate so I don't have problems when I'm going from one version to another. Let's come down here. You'll see here's all those AT templates. Here's the, AT, the, the template for a horizontal parent generic. I'm just going to copy that one and I'm going to place that over here in my library files from on my network so that everybody has access to the template and I'll paste it there and so there's the template I'm going to go ahead and rename this one to VR for variable resistor so I'm following the naming convention that's pretty much all that you need to start with to get to make a template I'm going to go ahead and open this one everything here is what I want <clears throat> the only difference is there is um, one. One is I want to go ahead and define the family code as a code as a VR. That way, when I create a symbol using this template, it knows it's a variable resistor automatically. So it's just setting that default value of the family code to VR. If you went to any of the push button circuit breaker ones, they're already set. This one being a generic, it's not set in there, so that's why it's not set it there. The second thing here is you notice it doesn't have that WD block name attribute is not included in here. And I want to include that to make those filters work that are in the catalog information. So to do that, I'm going to keep it simple and I am going to copy the family uh, attribute here. And I'm just going to redo this one as WDBLK in AM has to match the column name, which doesn't have the E. So it's WDBLK in AM. And here, it needs to be HVR for the default, horizontal variable resistor. Once I've got that, that's the template I want. I don't need to do anything else. I could have just added that 
after the fact in the symbol builder, but I'm going to be creating a bunch of variable resistors in the future, so I wanted to go ahead and get it in here. Now, it was important that I copied the family one and not, for instance, WD type. Each of these attributes having metadata added to it in the X data that tells it whether it's required or optional or what type of uh, attribute it's, it, it is going to be in the symbol builder. Family is a required one. That WD block name has to be a required one for it to work. It can't be optional. WD type is optional. So that's the reason I copied family. I didn't have to add that metadata, but I could change that. I'm not going to go through that, but I'm going to point out that a coworker of mine, Greg Fisher here, just did an article on X data editor and how the uh, how to modify that metadata in these in attributes and all. So there's an article here that covers that. I can avoid having to do that by just copying one of the required ones since I need a required one. If I was copying one, if I need one that was optional, I would just copy WD type or another one that is optional. And that way I don't have to fool with the met metadata. But you can also do that manually if you wanted to add those. That's everything I'm going to do for this particular one. So I'm going to go ahead and save this template. And it is a good to go template. But before we do this, one other thing I'm going to show you, I'm not sure if I have to actually select some objects to get to this point, but if this is something that is kind of tricky if you do it not to, oh, first of all, I should have shown this first. I got to be able to get to my template because remember I put it on my network, so I need that in my project properties. So let's go over here to project properties. Under schematic libraries, these, this is where it's looking for the uh, for the templates and panel footprint libraries. I do not like to put it in both because then it will show up twice. I also like not at the bottom, so I put it under panel footprint libraries. In my WD and V file, I already have that set up, so I can just hit the default there and save myself some time. But there you go. I'll just add the location of that library on my network under panel footprints here. Hit OK. Now, when I go to Symbol Builder, I'll go ahead and select some objects and pick a point here, just because I do want to get to the next screen because we're not done yet. And I can pick my library, and now that is the only template showing up because it's the only template I have in my library. It's my horizontal parent for the variable resistor. I'm going to go ahead and say OK because there's one last thing I have to do when I put stuff in my own library. If you look down here, there's no wire connections because the wire connections are a separate template and they have to be in the same location as the template I'm using. So because of that, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here and not save that and just show you what I need are called BB templates. If I come down here, let's type B. We got B, there we go. This BB0 down through BB533, those are all the wire connection templates. And if, I, if I'm missing those, it's not going to let me add those wire connections in there without creating them one at a time. So I'm going to copy those over to my uh, library where my template is for that I'm going to have for everybody in the company on the network get those in there and then everything's going to work correctly. So we are now ready to actually build the symbol. So I'm going to symbol builder. This is just a bunch of lines and AutoCAD lines and circles. Nothing AutoCAD electrical about it. You can see there's 12 objects for this insertion point. I'm going to use the center of my symbol. Change to my library of the where my template is I just created. And I'm going to hit OK, and there's my symbol ready to build. I like to zoom out a little bit on it. So you can see WD block name is now under required here, like it's supposed to be. It does not read in 2020 the HVR in the default. I still put it in there because previous releases it did. That's a little bugaboo that they made here. And, some change in 2020 that causes it not to read that uh, attribute, but you can see it read the family code one that we put in there. So I need to set that manually to HVR. I'm going to select tag one, hold my shift key down. Let me first turn my snap on because I like to use snap. 
tag one, hold my shift key down through WD block name, all the required ones, left click, drag it into my, while I'm holding down the left click, let go, and I can just place them in there and get all of them in here at one time. Then it's just a matter of me putting them where I want them within my symbol. So I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick just to make this look somewhat respectable before I actually create it. So it's just getting all the attributes where they where you want them. Let's move that over a little bit. And I usually put these little ones which are invisible attributes kind of like that. So there's all the attributes that are required. So it's a working symbol as is since it has all the required attributes. But there are still a few things that I want in here. One of those I talked about with you earlier was the WD type uh, attribute. That's an optional one that I pointed out earlier. So I'm going to take that one and just left click and hold, drag it over and place it right here. And then let's talk about that attribute a little bit before we actually use it. So let me get back to my PowerPoint. Okay the WD type attribute for schematic symbols. If it is a normal schematic symbol, like that variable resistor or push button that's on the ladder, it doesn't even have to exist in those. But if it does exist, it needs to be default value of nothing. But if it's a one line diagram, it needs to be assigned one that one minus for one line. If it's a hydraulic HY pneumatic PN. After that, you can create your own. I, they have to be three characters, though, if you create your own. They cannot be two characters. They have to be three. Uh, so point to point, I use P2P for all my point to point symbols. Now, what this does is it enables me to have a symbol on my ladder that's assigned a tag and all the information. And then on my one line, I use one a symbol with a WD type of one minus, and I can connect those up. And they can have the same tag, the same information. And in my point to point, I can have this symbol that we're creating here with the P2P WD type, and it can be connected up to the ladder also, have the same exact tag, have the same information. It's one and the same device throughout the software, and the software doesn't think there's duplicate tabs. Without that WD type, I could not assign the same tag to my point to point that I have on my ladder without it giving me an error message if I have duplicate tags, and it's going to give me that error message constantly. So this enables it to understand that these are all the same device, whether I have it on, on, on different drawings with the, with the same tag. So that is the purpose of the WD type attribute. To me, it's a very important attribute because it enables the, everything to connect up properly. So back here, what I need to do is, P2, is I'm going to assign P2P, whoops, 2. As my W type, I do all my point to points P2P. That way it will connect up to that variable resistor on that other drawing. So that's the next thing I want in here. After that, I want to get my rating tag in here, attribute in here, and I can just left click, drag and hold and place it. And then I'm ready for my wire connections. And as you can see, all my wire connections are here because I've pulled those BB templates over here. I had to do that while I was out of the symbol builder so it would reread those. And this is going to be a left none because you can see this got a wire coming in from the left. These are all going to connect up this way. So I'll just hit this little at, uh, set this little connect wire connection here because there are two attributes with wire connections. And since I've got this drawn on snap, I can get those in there one right after another. So there's two attributes. One here is the actual wire connection itself. So if you're doing like a multi-bus command, you get the X's on the components. Well, that's the, what causes the X's, is that attribute right there. The other one is the pin itself. So this would be pin plus minus W on this particular one is pin one, two, and three. Got all that done. My symbol is complete. So let's hit, go ahead and come over here, and we'll hit Close Block Editor or Done, either one, and it opens up this. You have the choice of block or W block. I always do a W block because I want it on my hard drive so I can use it in drawing after drawing. If it's block, it's in this drawing only that I have open, and I don't want that. I want it in, to be able to reuse this, so I like W block. Notice the WD block name's filled out already from 
over here. And then it's also got the different, uh, the pick point I don't have to redo because I already picked it. It's going to create an icon image and it's putting it in the folders that I've choose because I've got all that set up in my WD and B file. Notice here it has one error found. <clears throat> now, I want to point that out because it's kind of like the pirate code. Errors are more what you'd call suggestions than actual issues. Sometimes they're valid, sometimes they're by design. So I don't like the term error. I wish it would just say, we've got some suggestions for you. But if I look at the details of this particular error, it happens to be on the insertion point and it's telling me not in line with wire connections, the insertion point is. A, well, that's by, by design in this particular one. See, I've got an insertion point right here. This one's in line, but these two are not. That's by my design of the symbols, so that's okay in this particular instance. It's not really an error. It's just letting me know that it saw something that was outlined. Now, if I was doing a push button and I needed to trim on two different ends, the wire, that would be a whole different ball game. That would be a message I'd be interested in. But in this particular case, it really doesn't matter. So it's like I said, it's more of a suggestion than an actual issue in this case. Now, everything's set up the way I want to. Now we're ready to talk about the naming convention of the symbols. That is highly important. When you are naming your symbols, they have to follow these rules. No ifs, ands, or buts. The first five characters are mandatory for a schematic symbol, whether it's one line, point to point, any type, ladder, doesn't matter about the WD type, they have to be named correctly. So the first character has to be an H or a V, horizontal or vertical, one or the other. The next two are family code, Fourth character is a one for parent or standalone, two for a child object. And then the fifth character can be a one for normally open, a two for normally closed, or it could be a color such as in a light. Uh, if you're doing a light, R for red, B for blue, stuff like that, A for amber, or it could be an underscore, or it could be left off completely, but all those have been taken up pretty much by the software already, so you're not going to be able to do that uh, at all, probably. Uh, but then, unless you have your own unique family code that you're working with. But the fifth character can be an underscore, and then everything after that fifth character can be whatever you want. You can name it John Doe for all that cares. It really doesn't matter, but you have to follow this naming convention. Now, let me explain to you why just real quick. Uh, I had a class one time I was teaching, had a guy taking it who was pretty much said he already knew AutoCAD Electrical. He was just having some problems with reports and he uh, needed, was wanting to figure out what was what he was doing wrong. We got to this point of the class where I was tell, saying you have to follow this convention. He goes, no, you don't. I can name them whatever I want to and they work just fine. I went, well, yeah, you think they are, but they will cause you issues, especially in reports. He goes, no. They work fine and everything. And I said, well, you said you took this class because you're having issues with reports. What was your issue? He says, none of my custom stuff shows up in my reports. And I went, think about it. You're not naming them with this naming convention. They're not showing up in your reports and they're the only items not showing up. I think there's a relation to it. So I got him to change the names of just a few items in a drawing of one of his uh, that, that wasn't working. And all of a sudden they showed up in reports. It's not just reports though, it's other parts of the software too. So you have to follow this naming convention. There is no ifs, ands, or buts, or your reports and other parts of the software are not gonna work correctly. So that is why I'm trying, I stress, follow that naming convention. So back here in my drawing, since I'm using my template builder, my symbol builder and the template, it actually is pulling over H because I picked a horizontal template, VR because I picked a template that was, had the family code defined as VR, and one because it's a parent. It's already got that information in symbol builder. There's no reason for me to change it. You'll see the underscore after that. After that, I could name it whatever I want to. I went ahead and named mine one since it's the first one, but I could name it, like I said, potentiometer 
it wouldn't care. Anything is game, fair game after that fifth character. Got everything set the way I want to. It's going to the right libraries. This should be a working symbol. So I'm going to hit OK. Yes, I'm going to go ahead and insert it so I can show it's working. We'll place it about right there. Goes right to my edit component. This being a point to point, I'm going to connect it up to my schematic. Copy everything over from the schematic. It got the tag from the schematic, all the descriptions, everything came right on over. It's a working symbol. I'm going to go ahead and say OK. Let it update the drawing so it sees both of them. These line works I don't need anymore. If I want to check my wire connections, I'll go ahead and do a multiple bus here, five and five. That's good off of a component. There's those green X's from those three little attributes. And it is a working wire connection component, everything just like it's supposed to. I'm not going to bother changing my wire colors and stuff like that. That's not part of this particular one, but you get the idea of how you create a symbol. It doesn't matter which one you type you're doing, what single line or one over there on the regular schematic. They all work the same way. The WD type attribute is the only difference between these. I'm not going to bother putting in the other two symbols right now because of um, just no need to and plus I want to do that when we actually get to the um, icon menu. So let's return to our customization checklist over here. We just finished step two. The rest of this goes by real quick. As a matter of fact, I can do all five of these steps for everything we're doing in here in less than 10 minutes if I'm not running my mouth and pointing th at things and stuff. It's not, does not take a lot of time to do all this customization. Uh, I've timed myself before. I think the fastest I've ever done everything here in these particular fives, because this is uh, stuff I've been doing for years in classes, was, has been about seven and a half minutes. But normally it probably takes me about eight, eight to nine to do to do these five steps in their entirety but the footprint but i've also been doing this for a long time <laughs> so don't expect to do it that fast right out of the bat so the next part of this is going to be the footprints now the footprints are similar in their makeup and this one i'm not going to use a template so i can show you how to add attributes after the fact that aren't in the template so i'm just going to do this and move the one out of the box but the footprint is the next one we're going to work on here. So let me get back to my drawings and let's go ahead and let's see, go to the panel drawing. And this is where we're going to put our footprint that we're creating right here on the door below those push buttons right there. So the first thing to create a footprint, another thing I'm going to do different with the footprint is last time I did it as a drawing, I had just drawn a bunch of lines, arcs, and circles. This time I'm going to create this, the footprint from a drawing that I created in AutoCAD, not AutoCAD Electrical, but was created in AutoCAD years ago, years and years ago. So we'll go to the panel one just to be on the panel for when I do some other stuff. We'll hit the symbol builder. We're going to browse for a drawing right here and on my network I have a drawing called potentiometer footprint which I will open up here notice when I browse for a drawing I can't select objects or pick the point they're grayed out so the first time we did it by selecting and picking the objects this time doing it by browsing two different methods to do the same thing this is going to be a panel footprint out of the box there's only one attribute template for foot panel footprints so that's a generic one and I'm using the one out of the box so we'll hit OK and there's my potentiometer thus the reason my model number is OL11 because these go to 11 and my alarm is one louder that way so for this one I'm going to zoom out a little bit we're going to take go ahead and change our WD block name over to VR now that VR is in there because it was in, I added it to the default 
cataloged earlier when we did the at the very beginning. If I would not have added that to the default catalog at that time, it would not be here in the list either. So it's pulling this from the family codes of those tables in the default catalog. So I actually killed a couple of birds with one stone when I did that catalog table earlier. So right here, we'll go ahead, select these holding the shift key down and drag into the hold and let them go and place them. And then we'll just go ahead and put these again, just kind of in some different areas. I'm gonna keep it real simple for time's sake and just do it like that. That's good enough. No need for a WD type in a footprint because they um, don't have, that doesn't apply to footprints. It only applies to the schematic symbols. And the next thing here is I've got the WD block name saying all the required here. I do not need wire connections, but what I do want is a rating one in here. So I'm going to go ahead and where it says optional, I'm going to add an attribute, which is the fourth one from the left right there. I'm going to add the rating one attribute. And let's see, we'll make it middle justified and I'll make it about an eighth inch high rotation. All this is set. I don't need to make it invisible or anything like that. So we'll hit insert and I'll place that right in the middle. So I added an attribute using the rating one. Same thing, I can add it, uh, required ones up here using that button. That's how I could have done that WD block name without the template earlier. But in this case, either way, the symbol builder works the same for both. So I've got this in here the way I want it. I'm going to go ahead and hit close block editor up here. Same screen I said had before. Symbol names for footprints, they can be anything you want. There's no rules whatsoever of how you name them, so don't have to worry about that. In this particular notice, I've got two errors found. Again, there are suggestions. One error is telling me there's no wire connections. The other error is telling me there's no wire connections in line with my insertion point. It's a footprint, there shouldn't be. So again, don't matter to me. Didn't even bother opening them because I see it every time on a footprint. Uh, the symbol name, I could leave it potentiometer footprint, but I have a naming convention of my own. I usually do the initials of the manufacturer followed by the family code, followed by my model number that it's gonna be used for, which is OL11. I'm gonna copy that to my clipboard to save me some time typing when I do the footprint lookup. And when I click out of it, you can see it updates the name of the pong going in for the images also. So now that I've got it named the way I want it, I'm ready to go. We'll hit okay. It creates the footprint. Since I'm in doing it through the browse button, it doesn't try to insert it because I'm actually in that. It opened up that drawing that I selected. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that. Now I could add it now by doing a browse, but there's really no reason to because I wanna do it with the footprint lookup and I wanna make sure that's working correctly. And so that is my next step here to go back to my checklist, footprint lookup. Let's go ahead and do that one real quick. And to do that, we're going to go back to our drawing. And right here under panel, you will see under other tools, my footprint lookup, my footprint database editor. Now, if you remember uh, correctly, what I told you earlier is that this one's set up by manufacturer. It has to match the manufacturer in the catalog. If it was an existing manufacturer like Alan Bradley, I could simply hit edit existing, pick AB, not Alan Bradley, but pick any of these and edit that particular manufacturer. In this case, it's a brand new manufacturer. So I'm gonna create a new table. New table is called Nigel. That's the name of the manufacturer I put in my catalog. And it opens up this dialog box. If I would have been modifying a manufacturer, it would have been the same dialog box I'm in here. So at this point, it's the same way. The only difference is I could select a record and hit edit record or delete them, things like that. But we're gonna add a new one. Several things here, but I only really need two. The catalog number now is OL11, and then I'm gonna use a wildcard asterisk because wildcards are allowed, as you see over here. And that way, this will work for all five of them in the catalog. 
the 1,000, 2,000, 2,500, all five of them that we created will use the same footprint by using that wild card. So that one, and then the next one is the block name, which I copied to my clipboard. So I just pasted it in there. I could browse to go get it. If you browse and select it, it's going to add the path and the .dwg, which is unnecessary. All you need is the name of the block. So that's why I didn't bother doing that. Now, if you don't have your paths set up correctly in AutoCAD Electrical, then it's not going to, you, you would need those paths. But if you've got everything set up correctly, all you need is the block name itself. So I don't need to do that. Uh, assembly codes only required if you're using assembly codes. And the comment down here is optional, really doesn't make a bit of difference. Uh, the only place you would see the comments is when I hit OK here is right there. So some people use them for revision tracking to say this block was updated on such and such date or something, but it's not necessary because it's only seen right here. But that added it to my footprint lookup. Hit OK, save and exit. It's all working, both the footprint and the footprint lookup. And I'll show you that by going to my schematic list. <clears throat> I'm going to do a name location just to make sure I get everything from that one, and we'll go to the subfolder of just the schematic diagrams. So all five schematic diagrams being read in. We'll come over here, and I'll go ahead and mark existing and hide existing, and there you can see at the top for under door, because I've got mine sorting by uh, installation code and the tags. So there's the one from the that draw that drawing is not grayed out. I can hit insert. It found it. I'm just going to pop them in here just to get them in here for now. And I'll go ahead and place all three just to show you it's working and it's fine. It's found all the footprints. And that's working because of the, but the footprint lookup table is what it's using to find what to place in based on those particular objects or schematic symbols. So I'm working all the way through now through the, the first four and we're ready for the final one, which doesn't take long. So we're almost finished here. But the final step here of icon is an optional one. Some people create their own icon menus. Some people don't. I do personally like to myself. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, do the, show you how to do that. So we'll go ahead and come in here for our grand finale and create an icon menu for this. Now I'm going to first do the schematic, so I'm going to save this drawing. We'll go over here to the schematic point to point again. And we're going to put it and create one to, to in the icon menu on the schematic. So I'll come over here to icon, that's a schematic. Again, I could have done this on either one. I just want to be here on the icon menu for schematic. And we're going to use the icon menu wizard up here. Now, one of the things I'm going to show you about the way I do my icon menus, again, I like to keep stuff separate. So I have a link here in the default out of the box. The only thing different between this menu and the one out of the box is that little Vandalay link there, which opens up my icon menu that I want to use and put my custom stuff in. And then AutoCAD Electrical takes me back to the AutoCAD Electrical one. And I have the one for panels doing the same thing to where if I came over here to this one, Vandalay takes me to the, my schematic or my panel one and there's my icon. So I, have my, I like to keep them separate. Just so you'll know, if you want to know how to do that, there's also an article I did a while back called AutoCAD Electrical Custom Company and a User Icon Menu. It actually goes into a lot more depth because it's doing a user icon as well for each user as well as the one for the company. I'm just doing the custom company part of this article. Uh, but that will tell you how to do what I just showed you right here of where being able to go to your custom one and then back. You can find that also online with a lot of people in the past. The difference between mine that I had in the article is mine doesn't care what your standard is. If you're in an IEE project, it will swap, swap you back to the correct IEE one. I'm in a JIC one, so it's swapping me on JIC. So it doesn't care. My menu doesn't care what the standard is because it actually checks to see what the project standard is to know which icon menu to go back to. So that's the main difference on that one. But let's go ahead and modify it. Icon menu wizard here. I'm going to browse and go down here and select my custom one for the schematic and open it up. 
and we're going to add under the point to point sub menu here i'm going to add a new component and it's pretty simple just got to tell it what it is i'm going to say it's a potentiometer and i'm going to browse and select that image file i created when we made the symbol and then the block name itself so i'm going to go ahead and browse and the block name was an hvr01 right there and like this is what it would have done in the footprint lookup it puts all this information which i don't need i usually take it out because i personally don't like to see it <clears throat> but there it is with the block name is all it needs we'll hit okay we'll hit okay that's a working icon menu icon menu vandalay point to point potentiometer boom it's working i can connect it up to that secondary one here so icon menu for a component on the schematic side is pretty simple just pick component and add it in there with the uh, with an image and a block name for the panel side i'll switch back over here to the panel drawing for this i'm going to do the icon menu wizard again same thing browse but i'm not going to be doing a component this time now let me show you before i do this what i want to do this time is when we go to icon menu and you do a push button notice it opens up this dialog box and when i do catalog lookup it goes to push buttons i want my footprint to work the exact same way i like consistency so if that's the way they did it for everything else i want mine to work the same way so i'm not actually entering in when i go to the icon menu wizard this time for the panel a component i'm in, entering in a command so we'll come back here i need a uh, sub menu for my resistors so i'm going to go over here and add a new sub menu i'm going to call this one resistors for the image file, I'm going to use the same image I used on the uh, on the potentiometer there, just to, for some uh, consistency. So I'll say OK. We'll go in here, and I'm going to add this time a command. So this is going to be for my potentiometer. Potent. I may have spelled it wrong that time. P O T E N. I can't remember. Yeah, e N. Potent. We're going to just call it a pot. <laughs> I'm probably just went dead on that for a minute. All right, we'll browse. Now this time I am going to use the actual image name for it. And for the command, I'm going to go over here to list. And this is a list of the available commands. So you can see like if I was doing a three unit schematic for three pole schematic or two pole, all that's here. For this one, I'm going to be doing the INFPX one here, which is for the panel with a parameter for the family code. So I'll select that one, hit a space bar, put in the family code in quotes, potentiometer. I got, got it now. All right, so there we go. We'll hit OK. We got it in there. Hit OK. Now it's just a matter of icon menu. Go to mine. There's my sub menu I created. There's my command I created. Took me to their same little command block here and or dialog box and there it goes to my variable resistors so it's working just like any other command inside the product so basically that gets me through all five steps we created catalog information we created schematic symbols we created the footprint we created the footprint lookup and the icon menus took almost an hour to do go through all that while I was running my mouth, like I said, less than 10 minutes in real life to do all five. So you can imagine creating a footprint doesn't take near as long. So customization is pretty simple, especially when you use the tools that are there using that symbol builder and the icon menu. Everything is here out of the box uh, to, to be able to create what you need to do. So that concludes. Once I get this to go to the next screen, there we go. That concludes the webcast at this point, but there may be some questions. So I'm going to go over here because I haven't been looking to see if there have been any questions that um, people have asked or if anything has been answered. So uh, maybe Clayton, if you can let me know if there's anything I need to address.
Well, Rick, it looks like we've only had one question, and that has pretty much been taken care of. Okay. I'll give everybody just a second or two here, just in case somebody wants to ask something. Again, uh, be sure to fill out that survey, and if you have any requests for the future, please put them in there because maybe yours will be the next one we do. And at this time, I'll turn it back over to Ashley. Okay, thanks, Rick. Um, this will conclude our broadcast. If you think of additional questions later, you can simply reply to that confirmation or reminder email that you receive from GoToWebinar, and we can get those to Rick or um, your sales rep to get your questions answered. Once again, if you could take a few moments to fill out the survey, we would appreciate it. Um, it will just automatically pop up on your screen as we close down today. And I don't see anything else coming in, so we'll wrap up. Have a great day, everybody, and thanks for attending.